And welcome everyone to Juneau, Alaska. A little breezy, a little cold here in Juneau for another bout of roller derby coming to you live from Centennial Hall. I'm Indy Klein. Joining me is Money Honey. Hello, Indy Klein. It's How you been doing? a while. Let's do this again. Let's do it again. We've got a really interesting matchup happening. It's a mashup of a couple of the Juno teams here. There's been a little bit of a change in how the Juno teams are structured, uh, Money Honey. Tell us a little bit That's about right. what's happening. That's right, I got to speak with a couple of the skaters. It looks like for season three, they are no longer the Ravens versus the Kill Cats. They are uh, one league, they're WFTDA, Women's Flat Track Derby Apprentice League. And so they're focusing on that travel, that competition, but Lucky for us, the home teams, they get to split up the lead, or split up the skaters and do what's called a mashup. To, so that leads to today's season beatings. Yes, yeah, season bills. beatings. That's right. It's a, it, I was sorry not, not to interrupt you, but yeah, it's a holiday themed about today with the sleigh bells going up against the reindeers. And uh, it's going to be a really fun matchup. Really interesting to look at the rosters, how they divided out the talent, how they divided out the new skaters, the fresh meat as they're called in uh, roller derby. And uh, so it's gonna be interesting to look at all that. And it's really interesting to see how many new women are skating. That's right, actually, they, you know, this is their third season. So there's gone through a maturity of retirees that have moved out and moved on to other things and other sports, or they're just hanging out and doing other jobs within the league. Uh, this time around, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a, a good, good matching of uh, the vet skaters, the ones we've seen all the, since the beginning, and then some really great new skaters. And I've had an opportunity to see and talk to them over the last few months, and it's been great. Yeah, well, we're gonna get to the intros right now. They're coming in and taking the, uh, taking the the rink right now so let's go check them out coming up first is going to be the sleigh bells and uh they're the, in white yeah the sleigh bells are all in white it's going to be white against red that's going to be the uniforms today that you'll see in the traditional holiday colors and so coming on out here first is going to be the captain looks like they're all coming out and they're all coming out at once oh nicely done oh there's a little little gremlin there that looks like we one of Santa's go. helpers on the side there. That's right. We could just <laughs> go down the roster. We'll wait and see if they're going to be doing any kind of I think uh, they're going to do intros. intros. They're going to do intros. Yep, they're I coming into yeah. a pack. And first they're going to go with the captain, which is number 99, T. She's a longtime veteran of, uh, of the roller derby here. Coming up next, a great, you'll be, we'll be calling this number a lot, Combustible. We'll be watching her a lot today. That's she's right. Next, that's number B4U, and she is before a lot of the crowd a lot of the time. <laughs> Who else true. we got here, Money Honey? We have number 247. That is Bitter, Bitter Glitter. Glitter. She's actually returning this season after a pretty serious leg injury. So a this is going to be great to see her back on skates. That's yeah, her first bout back from a busted leg, and uh, so she's coming back in. Number 33. That's uh, coming Southeast up next. Southeast Manhandler. We also saw right in there, that was Titan Young there at number 25. She came down from Fairbanks and is she, now part of the Juno Roller Girls. That's right, yes she did. Also now Lulu Von Slaughter, that's number 88. And another one of the new skaters here, which is Shorty Morena, someone you got to talk to. We'll see that interview at halftime, honey, honey. A favorite here, Peach Clobber, OB1. You'll recognize her in those peach colored shorts all night long. And the bench coat is Roland Marvel. And uh, she got a non derby related foot injury right before she the. She did. Bout. So I got to see her skate during a scrimmage, and then boom, she's in a cast. And she actually did ask the doctor if she could wait to have the cast put on after oh, the bout. A champion. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, that's the sleigh bells. And another, like we were saying, an interesting mix between the veterans, between the fresh meat, and then so you, and, and youth and veterans, too. You know, like that, that mix is, is really interesting, too. Coming up next, we got the reindeers, and uh, oh my. It looks like Santa Coming is Coming out there in on style. The side. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Here that's they come. Cougar Chaser. He's mini ref. <laughs> This is the reindeer song. <laughs> Very good stuff. Now he is enjoying it. Look at that, throwing out the candy. April Mayhem in front there is groovy. But that's just Julie. 
and she is one of the captains tonight. Just Julie is the captain along with April Mayhem, who's the co-captain, and that's April Mayhem, and you'll recognize her style all night long, long and lean and just all over the track. That grin does not no, end. No, it never stops. Hypnagoria is next. You got a chance to talk to Hypnagoria as well. That's double, double zero. And then also Jean-Claude Hot Dam is coming up next. And uh, Jean-Claude is another one of those really dynamic skaters. We'll be seeing her a lot in past bouts. She's had a bit of a bout herself with the sin bin. So yes, she's got to she keep has. her penalties under control this time. I think she's going to do fantastic. She's uh, one of the longest skill, uh, skaters that's had the most skill even from the outset. So Absolutely. She's one of the most dynamic skaters out there. Hawk Block is also in here, number 46. She's one of the new skaters for uh, Juno. I and interviewed her early. We'll s earlier. We'll see that a little bit Yeah, later. looking forward to that at halftime. And then number 49th is Made in Alaska. And there she is. <laughs> she is one tall, tough, blocking skater, and she is the definition of Alaska. So made in Alaska, <laughs> right. it's a natural fit. Verta Breaker, number 666, dynamic, uh, really uh, fast uh, jammer, and so uh, she's someone you'll see out there jamming a lot. And she's, you know, I saw her at scrimmage. She's developed quite a bit this season, so we're gonna definitely see some new looks from her. Kylie Wyote is number C4, wearing that blue hat there. And you'll uh, be seeing her a lot too, a really good blocker. And new to the sport about a year ago, I think. Is that right? That's right. I yeah. believe she has already been in about before. Uh, and she, you know, so looking at the layout of the team, I think that the teams, they're evenly matched. We're really in for a good treat to see this mashup for this, this first season opening bout with the Juno Roller Girls. Bench coaches for the uh, Reindeers are gonna be Fatty Duke and Wild Bird. Both very accomplished and excellent skaters themselves, but we'll be bench coaching this one. We're gonna uh, be hearing next the national anthem being played by uh, Brian Messing and guitarist Ward. It's not over yet, a little of the Hendrixing there. They're Hendrixing it. They're bringing it home. A little Woodstock era Hendrix there. Love it. <laughs> well, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to um, be hearing uh, and seeing all the action that's happening here tonight. It's gonna be really interesting to see how these different teams work within their new rosters. The teamwork is gonna be a little bit different than we saw on the old teams, that when they were two different teams that had worked together a lot. And then the rivalry, the old rivalry. Some it's of the gone. old rivals are together on the same that's teams right. now. That's right, that's right. I think gonna that's gonna be an interesting dynamic when they're used to seeing each other kind of in a, wait, I'm out to get you. And now they're saying, wait, I'm out to help you. <laughs> that's right. So we are looking for, I mean, this could be a whole new view yeah. of this league as far as their teamwork and their strategies go. Like you said before, you know, Hot Dam and Mayhem were not on the same teams before. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Just Julie and, and, and Kim Bustable, they were not on the same teams before. Now we're going to see some switch around. Of course, this tonight, Kim Bustable's on uh, 
the uh, white team, the sleigh bells. But, you know, they're still, during scrimmage, that's all they do is play against each other. Yeah. So last scr last time I watched them before watching this, or before coming to the bout, uh, I asked them specifically if they had divided up into tonight's rosters, and they said no. They wanted to be oh. together all the way up until game day. Interesting. So they didn't know until game day really what the rosters would be. They knew what their rosters would be, but they weren't they to allowed to scrimmage oh, as the rostered names. Well, we got it. The equipment checks over. We're going to head into the first jam here. We'll be talking about some of the rule changes that have happened in the past year as well as we go on here. It made the game a little bit simpler to watch, really, from a so spectator standpoint in a lot of ways, and a lot faster. It so is we'll much faster. Uh, they're, they're lining up. They've done gear check, and they're lining up for the first whistle, and this is when, when the game starts. So here we go. Uh, if you haven't seen roller derby before, the two jammers are the point scorers. They're wearing the stars on their helmets, and they're trying to get past all the players in the opposing team one time around and on the next time around every pa player they pass is a point that's so the basic scoring you can see right there goes uh peach clobber is in front she's been declared the lead jammer and april mayhem has been sent to the sin bin already just a few seconds into the jam and april mayhem is on the bench at the in the and sin that bin is in the aurora right off sin first bin. jam starts a power jam and so Life's a peach there. There she is, Peach Clobber, trying to get around. She is the lead jammer, and she's the point scorer. Just, just Julie held her back just long yeah. enough to burn some time for her jammer that's in the box. And that's what we'll be calling these names a lot. The other thing about this match today that you'll see, and this bout today you'll see, is that it's, an, it's a shortened roster. So only eight players on each team, and that'll uh, mean that we'll be seeing the same women here throughout the uh, night. Uh, often there's a, usually in the traveling team there's 14 players. 14 and players are rostered. Usually 20 are on the team that cycle through within each roster for any game. So we will be seeing a lot of skaters. Now tell me what was happening there with the, all the action completely stopped. Peach Clobber, I guess, had to, was out with a penalty in the sin bin, and so all the skaters just stopped and waited for April Mayhem to come out. That's right. Uh, you know, there's no reason to be going around the track racing energy if there's going to be a jammer change, which is what we had there, where one jammer went to the box, the other jammer was released. It's a fairly unusual situation. That doesn't come up too much. It's funny to see that in the first jam. Well, just like any game, if there's no point scorer on the field, what's the point right. of playing? Right. Well, here's April Mayhem. She's scoring points at will right now. She's just skating around. Every time through, it's another five points for her. And she's looking to rack up points early right now. And, uh, well, Peach Clobber has been released from the box. She's going to enter in the back of the pack, and she's back in for making some scores. And remember, she's the lead jammer, so she's the one who can call the, uh, the uh, jam off. So she got five on that. So what's the score now, Mr. Indy Klein? Boy, I don't really know. Right now the scoreboard is saying 10 to 5. I thought that uh, that um, uh, that April Mayhem had scored a few more points than 10. But we'll see here how it comes out. The scoring in uh, roller derby is a little bit fluid as the jams are decided and the uh, scorekeepers are in, uh, interpreting what the uh, referees are saying. Looks like we have hot dam on the jammer line with uh, going up against Kim Bustable. Who's going to get through first? Boy, that's a that's a tough matchup right there. A couple of really tough skilled skaters, and it looks like Kim Bustable is first through, and she's been yep. declared lead jammer. Kim Bustable was knocked. Uh, I'm sorry, hot dam was knocked out of uh, bounds and had to go back to the back of the pack to re-enter and try again. Here they come. They're coming around right now, as you see, and Kim Bustable has called it off. She's called it. A couple of taps at the hips. That calls off, so watch for that. The lead jammer can call the jam at any time. It's done for strategic purposes. Uh, if they feel that the other jammer is going to start scoring some points, they'll call it before the other jammer can score points. That's and right, you can see, strategy. You can see uh, Hot Dam coming up fast and start uh, in a point scoring mode there. Next up for this third jam is uh, Vertebreaker, number 666 for the Reindeers in red. All right, Vertebreaker coming up. Looks like the. She's small, but she packs a wallop. That's right, it looks like there Peach she comes is around up inside. again. Oh, she as got the caught up on white. the side. Here we got Vertebreaker coming in for the Reindeers. Good pass, And Vertebreaker has been declared lead jammer. So she is coming through right now, and she's coming up fast on the inside on the inside got in there in and bounds. through that's five points for vertebreaker number 666 
And she calls it. She called it because she got she had Peach Clobber right behind her. So that was a shutout there, five points for the Sleigh Bells. Um, sorry, for the Reindeers, five points, and for uh, the Sleigh Bells, nothing. So 15 to 10 now, the uh, 15 to 11 now, the score with the uh, Reindeers taking the lead. Who's on the jammer line this time? I can't see over there. It looks like, is it April Mayhem? That looks like Kim Bustable. Kim Bustable and... And Mayhem. And Mayhem's working on the outside. And now working around to the inside to try to become lead jammer. And she gets there. And she got her. T took it right up to the very yep. end of that uh, game, the playing zone. Kim Bustable's finally through. Although she's not lead, she still can't give up. April Mayhem's calling it right there. She got through twice and so called it. Let's say that Bitter Glitter just did a great hit. Welcome back to the track, Bitter. She's just coming back from an injury. We're looking great. And as the house announcers are saying, actually, Bitter Glitter forced out April Mayhem there. It's kept her from scoring the full amount of points on that time through. It's a great point. Those kinds of blocks are sort of the subtle point of the game that you uh, start watching the more you watch roller derby. That's right. Uh, you know, you want to, as a jammer, you want to push push those skaters out of the engagement zone so that they have to put their hands up or put their hands down, but they basically have to yield to the jammer, and that's a, that's a point. So Bitter held her back really well. That's great. Okay, oh, a tough hit there right out of the block. And that's T putting the hit on Sean Claude. And those two can really, I, you know, I don't know who you'd so bet on there on that fight. I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> what are you seeing out there? I really, I, you know, I'm really seeing a good wall set up by the reindeers in red, especially the teamwork of C4, which is Kylie Wyote, and Hawk Block, number 46, Hypnagoria, double zeros, and Maiden Alaska. That's the makeup of the red blockers. Now the majority of the Sinbin, that's Jean-Claude going into the Sinbin again there, and, and um, the, seems like the majority are for these out of bounds, for like being forced out of bounds. Is that what's happening with these new rules? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, if you cut the track or cut any players without yielding and coming back behind them, you're, it's immediate trip to the box if the refs see it. So that's what's happening there. Now here comes Jean Claude up, ha up fast. She gave a big wallop to the blockers you know, in her way. Now she's trying to work her way through the wall there. She's really stuck right now. In the meantime, Shorty Marina for the, the new sleigh the bells. She is just whipping around the track. She's not even paying attention to what's going on there. She's just going. She's kind of she's got her. She's uh, it's maybe a little winded out there. It's her first. Uh, First bout in a, in a while now. Has she skated before? She has not. She started with a community school's intro to skate class and just knew right away she wanted to be skating with J Juno Roller Girls. Well, she's clearly got some talent. She's out there right now taking the best that Jean-Claude Hot Dam can dish out and uh, and scoring points. That's right. She's coming back around again. She hasn't called it. She has the ability to call it. There's only nine more seconds left in this jam, so it'll be called here in just five seconds. Whether she calls it or not, the jam will be over. But she scores three more points there as she works through another wall. And, and that's the jam. That's the jam, and that was a high-scoring jam for the Sleigh Bells. They needed that as the Reindeers were getting out ahead. Right and now uh, it's real tight, schedule, uh, tight scores right now, 21 to 24. It's fun to see Shorty Morena there. Uh, skating she's uh not overly flamboyant but just good and even on her feet uh very mobile and fast where she needs to be sort of picks her moments to be fast i think quick. she also has a single focus in mind which is get through the pack get back around the track get through the pack get back around the track <laughs> <That's good. laughs> all right our jammer's coming around here's peach clobber has been declared the lead jammer in this one and vertebraker is on her vertebraker's really pumping Notice Vertebraker has definitely developed a speed style. She has closed that gap quite well. Yeah. I'm not sure Peach knows that she's right behind her. Oh, and she takes a hit. And, and she rolls, rolls back up and, and back she's around. Back up. Oh. So that's a penalty for Vertebraker. She is going to the box because. That's a back block kind of hit? She got a back block. Yeah, that's back correct. Block. Okay. So we got a replay of that there here. Here it is. She's coming around through. And there's Peach, there's and then we'll Peach. see Vertebraker coming in right into that white wall. 
And that right there is a back block on the outside player. And the back block generally is defined as causing a player to lose their relative position and forcing them out of the play. Okay, and that's exactly what happened. That's a basic layman's terms that you don't hit people in the back and knock them down. Peach Clobber still on this uh, r r run here, scoring a lot of points. No other jammer in as Vertebraker is in the sin bin because of that hit. Right now, it's just an open jam for her, and she's right. scoring five points every time around and past the sin bin as well. She's scoring five yeah, the points every red time she's scoring. The wall in front, Southeast Man just tried to uh, break that wall up for Peach to get through, and it actually worked really well. So yeah. that's an example of where the, the blockers really make that make that score happen for the jammers. They're also down a, a uh, blocker as well. So right now the uh, sleigh bells, uh, the, sorry, the reindeers. Vertebreakers back into the pack. She calls off the jam. Great jam for Peach Flower and the sleigh bells. Good job. Absolutely. All right, that was a dynamic scoring uh, opportunity there and the sleigh bells have jumped way up with uh, 56 points now. Reindeers with 24. So that was a very important jam there. Uh, Sleigh Bell's taking a commanding lead so far. Of course, those kinds of points can be scored very quickly, and one jam can make a complete turnaround in, a, in any about. You should never give up if your score is on the underside. Doesn't matter. The one jam is all, all it takes to get it back around. Wow, Combustible just, just got through. As soon as the whistle went through, she just went down low and cut through the pack. She is lead jammer. And I think that's important when you're going up against April Mayhem, someone who's very fast can get through uh, blockers very quickly. Kim Bustable as lead jammer did call it off, but she did not give up. She still kept moving forward as she was calling the jam yeah. off because those points can still count. Yep, that was really interesting. And uh, April Mayhem coming up quick there. So okay. for anybody watching, if it's ever a little confusing, some of the things that I like to recommend is to watch the refs, especially when you hear a whistle or you see somebody going to the box. The refs give a lot of indication of what they're doing uh, you know, what's going on on the track, because they're ultimately the ones that are making the call. Chicken Hawk is our lead ref tonight. He's wearing the red helmet in the middle of the track. You'll see him come in and out of the picture often. You also have two uh, jam refs. Those are the ones that just keep track of their jammer, either the red jammer or the white jammer. And you'll see them kind of follow them. Those follow the jammer around and watch them. They're the ones who declare the lead jammer just like they just did for Jean-Claude Hot Dam. That's came right. through and was declared lead jammer by that finger going up in the air from the referee. So here comes Jean-Claude Hot Dam coming in, and here she comes. She, she slowed up and is going to try picking her way through this one. Shorty just tried to, to the get outside, a good little Gets knocked to the her. outside hard, and that's by our Fairbanks uh, job, uh, skater there. Titan Young hit her out and still going up against Titan Young here. Looks like Meanwhile, Hot Dam is making some good points, sitting back, hanging, seeing what's happening. Meanwhile, Southeast Manhandler has come through as the jammer for the uh, sleigh bells. And that's the jam. And that's been called. Not bad start for the Man, season of, opener at Juno Roller Girls. A lot of action right away, a lot of really high level skill as far as uh, the skating goes. Do you see any strategies sort of playing out right now for each team? Yeah, I do. I definitely see an aggressive, uh, jammer-heavy strategy. Uh, the blockers are, you know, the white team's jammer, or, or I'm sorry, the uh, sleigh bells, they are moving out of the way of their jammer, and they are just, all they focus on is keeping the other jammer back. A lot of wall work as well. So they're lining up together and making sure that nobody can get through. Next jam has started. And once again, Peach Clobber, who's having a great bout so far, has been declared lead jammer. She's been scoring a lot of points for the Sleigh Bells, who are now in the lead 61 to 26. She just she busted through that red wall and called it off. And I think she made one point, one point went to April Mayhem on that. And, uh, but five points uh, for uh, the Sleigh Bells by Peach Clobber. Uh, ref uh, Major P. Rick, he actually corrected the scoreboard to put that was two. So sometimes two points for the sleigh bells. Two points, two points for the sleigh bells. Now why is that? I thought she had gotten through the entire wall. She just hadn't cleared three of the players. That's the ref's discretion. Well, I'm not judging. satisfied with that. <laughs> That's right. I, I question. Ooh. 
<laughs> so who's our jammers now? We got Kim Bustable again. Oh, and Verta Breaker, Verta Breaker is out. Is not the lead. Comes through. She has not been declared lead though. She is not, but she is Kim fast. Bu Look at that. Kim Bustable has been declared lead jammer. We have a lot of action, really good action. Tight packs. Whoa, a lot of action there. Kim Verta Breaker is a dynamic skater to watch. A lot of movement, and uh, she's you know just a smaller skater. So a lot of times when she goes up against a wall of blockers, there's a real uh, <laughs> percussive power to what happens. She's also a little closer to the floor, so <laughs> she's able to <laughs> bounce right back up when she gets knocked yeah, down. Absolutely. I tough. love Verta Breaker. I you know one of my favorite skaters. All of them are my favorite skaters for what they are really good at. But she's just really you know it's just those one of those athletes. It's just super fun to watch. She you is know, very fun to watch. All right, we get I'd next watch jam her coming walking up. Down the street. <laughs> <laughs> next jam coming. I won't comment. Next jam coming up. <laughs> Here comes Jean Claude to Hot Dam going up against Southeast Manhandler. And here it comes with Jean Claude making a quick move to the inside but being held up there by She's a bitter pushing, glitter. She's pushing, pushing, pushing. That bitter is a glitter. great wall. Bitter glitter is happy to be out on the track and really, you can see she's putting a lot into it. But Jean-Claude got through that. What happened, bitter glitter got caught up with her, one of her own players a little bit and uh, they ended up just hitting the ground there. Jean-Claude took advantage of that, came through and here she comes. Oh, quickly through, untouched until then. There was a touch. <laughs> Got knocked down, but she's back up. She's got five points there on that pass through, and there she calls it. Yeah, she had some uh, direction from those bench coaches over there, Wellbird and Fatty Duke, to uh, call it off. Call it. That's right. She saw Southeast. Now I see Shorty is in again as a blocker for uh, the Sleigh Bells, uh, and we also have her in as a blocker with uh, Lulu Von Slaughter and T. So with one blocker in the box, Titan Young is in the box. They're going to skate just one blocker short for this jam. So Shorty Moreno was uh, a dynamic jammer. Let's see how she is as a blocker number here. Number 90 there. Her, her uh, skater, her jammer's through. Peach Clobber once again. And here comes April Mayhem, two of the uh, kind of most dynamic and best uh, skaters out there as far as just speed and skill coming through. Just Julie hits the deck hard. There's Peach some. calls it off. That was not uh, not a mess she wanted to get that running into. That was not pretty. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Right now the score is 70 to 40. Sleigh Bell's in the lead. And uh, we take got a look a, at a replay here. Yeah. So here comes that hit that's coming up here. A little bit of a. Comes she in says, hard. "Oh, that is a big old that's wall. I'm not going to fight it. I'm done." And she calls it off. Yeah, she's just and like, we okay. Discretion's a better part of valor sometimes, you know? You've got to pick your battles. Save it for the next jam. <laughs> now, right. again, you know, these skaters, there's eight on each team for this bout. So and we got one of our new skaters, double zero out there, which is uh, Hypnagoria. She's come out and is the lead jammer right now. And she comes through. And makes it through quickly. Wow, oh, that was a great, great assist move. by Jess Julie pushing out the entire wall of sleigh bells. But also a great uh, elusive move by uh, Hypnagoria there to miss getting hit by that blocker. That was really impressive. Yeah, she, the step one was her blocker, Jess Julie, moving, moving that whole wall, just slid him right to the inside. Step two was her to juke and be a, Agile getting past uh, the remaining blocker. Exciting to see a new skater out there. We don't know what style they're, they're going to be skating in, and she just wows the crowd with that. Well, it's 72 to 44 now. Uh, that kind of 30 point differential has been there for uh, the last few jams, and uh, reindeers have not yet been able to cut into that, although they're keeping pace with the 30 point differential. Right now it's 44 to 72, and we've got our next one coming up here. With we got Shorty just pushed out by the just Julie at, with an assist with uh, Oh, and Jean Claude Vertebr Hot Dam hit hard by T and declared lead jammer. Through the through on the first time. But she had Shorty right Shorty on her, right so she called her. it off. She's like, I don't even tell you what, Shorty came up out of nowhere there, right? She is fast. I am telling you, she is a <laughs> skater with the Junior Roller Girls you need to keep an eye on. All right. No doubt about it. 
Sure. So some of the changes that came up here, we could talk about a couple of the rule changes. One of the things is that the minor penalties that people may remember have all been gotten rid of. That's right. Uh, some penalties that were minors have been upgraded to majors. So if you do something like pass opposing blockers while out of bounds and then go back inbounds, that's immediate trip to the box. Uh, a single whistle. Peach Clobber in the lead here, by the way, in this jam. That's right. The single whistle is a new uh, aspect of the game as well. Used to be double whistles at the start of the jam where they would allow the blockers to start rolling. Uh, they first and then the jammers and now it's just one whistle and jammers just go it makes the start of the jam very fast it is mayhem <laughs> it is mayhem we got the lead blocker right now is the lead blocker is april mayhem right no no the lead blocker is actually peach sorry, she's lead jammer, calling it off and she's calling it so she that was came a fast through, jam she came through first well with those two skating with the with april mayhem and peach clobber out there it's going to be fast they're both fast skaters so far, I'm seeing some really good teamwork on both sides. I think the score is uh, reflective of some penalties, starting off with power jams. Uh, the score of 76 to 48 with the sleigh bells ahead. And we're 10 minutes, 25 seconds into the first half. Next jam starting. And coming through first, oh. Nagoria almost came through there. She's trying to, and let's see if she can get away from T here. She's going to get away here. from T. No, and Kim Ooh. Bustable got through as that battle was happening. Great work by Blocker T out there, number 99, one of the veterans on this team, and uh, held up Kim Bustable, who's now calling the jam. So that was great work. But you can see there's a lot of skill in Hypnagoria. She's got a lot of skill there. Good replay of this coming up in just a second here as we see the block happens. This is T moving up there into the front, getting back around. Oh, just here a comes melee. T. Oh. And then boom, Kim Bustle's up and back in to make a pass. It's the start of the next jam coming up. We have Sean Claude Hot Dam up against Titan Young. And coming to us, it looks like her first trip to the jam line is Miss Titan Young. She's a very defensive. And Jean-Claude threw first. Right Sorry, yes, Jean-Claude threw first. On, down, but not out. And now she's coming in and has gotten around. And Something is declared lead really jammer. She floor. is, but before that happened, we took we saw blocker uh, number 90, Shorty Marena, go into the box, I think, for the first time tonight because she back blocked hot dam. And uh, jam was called there. John Claude hey, called that jam. All right, next jam coming up. Peach Clobber in one more. No, who is this? Uh, that is Peach for the Sleigh Bells, and it looks like to be Mayhem for the uh, Reindeers. Is that Peach? That is Peach. Okay. There she yes, goes. and there she is. Should have recognized it. She did a little tippy toe move on the outside and got through lead blocker now. Ob Wan. That is Peach Clobber. Meanwhile, here she comes. You can see her. See what the red on her face. Concentration as she comes through a little bit outside. Now I'm working her way back inside. Meanwhile, April Mayhem has come up and she's called it. Peach Clobber has called it there as she saw April Mayhem was coming up on the pack. April Mayhem may have gotten a couple of points there. Yeah, two more points for the Sleigh Bells, zero for the Reindeers. Okay, all right, so the Reindeers did not pick up any points. 79 to 48. Again, that 30 point, 31 point differential uh, staying pretty consistent here throughout this uh, this period. You know, I would not, I, I thought when I first looked at the rosters, I thought that the, you know, the Reindeers might have had the edge. We'll see, because the score is not over until the end. Yeah. Just knowing the Just personnel. knowing the skaters and yeah. having seen them scrimmage. But as you say now, it's what's interesting to see That's here is as you're saying, a lot of these skaters, uh, they've been on traveling teams and stuff, but they're, 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 all, they're uh, in the two Juno teams that have existed. They're used to battling each other, not necessarily working together as blockers right. and that kind of thing. So it's interesting to see how that teamwork is developing. I think uh, Hot Dam has really developed in the last, since the last season. I'm definitely seeing a clean, clean play and smart call-offs. Well, she's always been incredibly skilled and had speed and power. And uh, it's, it's uh, really interesting to see um, her take that and then add that strategy 
We, we tend to have, you know, just as viewers, we tend to watch the jammers, but, you know, sometimes if you just focus on a jam or two on what's going on in the, in the athleticism and the competition within the pack, you're going to see a, a little bit of a different view of the game. It's like watching the offensive and defensive lines in football. That's right. You can only focus on one at a time. Yeah, we tend to, tend to focus on the quarterbacks, but it really is where the game is happening is in that. T yet again holding back Hypnagoria as much as possible, but it wasn't enough. She is now lead jammer. She's, she's looking for the <laughs> crowd to pump it up. <laughs> we got a nice white wall, in. In the white wall in the back with red is busting it away. And Goria is looking like she's trying to come through there. She's doubles there. She calls it right there. So Goria so couldn't quite get through there. She got one point, I think, and she correct. couldn't quite get through that, and so she called it before uh, Southeast Manhandler could catch up and score any points for the Sleigh Bells. Still, the Sleigh Bells are maintaining that uh, distance. They've had about a 28-point difference right now. 51 to 79 is the score as we've got about five minutes coming up on about five minutes left in this period. We have Mayhem on the jammer line as well as Peach, I believe, again on the jammer line. And a big pile up right before they even get started. Here comes April Mayhem. Everybody is going down. Uh, this is a fun battle to watch here, T against April Mayhem. And this is also a fun battle to watch. Clobber against Mayhem and Mayhem's gonna call it. Now Mayhem didn't, or I'm sorry, Peach Clobber did not stop. She was looking to get the last score she can. Yeah. That big she replay of all of those skaters going down. Oh man, look out. <laughs> look at that, all the way, almost wow, half the, the tracks balance, covered with the some. The balance there is quite extraordinary to see the balance of, uh, of Clobber. Keep her feet and maintain her advantage there. We have Kim Bustable on the jammer line for the sleigh bells, and we also have Vertebreaker on the jammer line, and she is out. Vertebreaker is lead jammer. This could be the this could be the jam that gets them going around. Gets a score changeover. Here comes Vertebreaker coming through, trying to. She's on the outside. She got turned. She came around. Now she's got T left, and she's oh, around T, and that's a five three. points right there. That's four points. She did not oh, pass points. the opposing jammer, oh, and she no. calls it. I like to say she hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. All right. Good, good break, I mean, her speed this season just coming up, she is skating the oval, as we say. She is doing a very efficient job of getting around the track really fast and staying in control when she gets back to the pack. And she, she has she has a multiple leg strokes per for, per lap with her I size. Was, you know, honestly, <laughs> you know, she really I was moving. counting, uh, <laughs> at, you know, not, not, not here, but at a scrimmage, I was counting, and she does about four crossovers in the straightaways, uh -huh. which means she's cutting across diagonally across the track. Yeah. And here comes Shorty Morena, one of our new skaters. She's got April Mayhem on her. She's, gonna, she's looking back at April Mayhem to see what she's got on her. Maybe she'll that call it, but maybe she'll try to get some here. points here. Oh, and she called it. She but got a few points, four, you know, three points, like, and well, then yep, called it. What I would like to say about Shor Shorty is it's reminiscent of a, a skater that currently skates with Juno Roller Girls. Catapult Kim? I was going to say Catapult that, Kim. It's Catapult Kim's style, and, and I see it in Shorty. It's just really, really impressive that that you have that dynamic like with a uh, compact skater who's fast and is willing to take hits and give them. But also the finesse when they, once they get into the pack, the way of picking their way through, having the, sh the dealing with the speed, coming in slow, going, coming in hot, pulling up real quick, all that breaking. And here comes uh, one of the rising stars, I tell you, this uh, Hypnagoria, double, double zero there, has again been declared lead jammer. She's calling it. Looks like she uh, bobbled a little bit and Peach got got up in front of her there, so she called it. Smart, and smart strategy. And sometimes I'll tell you something, when the come out, if you don't become lead jammer, that was a great example of what to do. Yes. Peach Clobber kept on her tail the whole way 
intimidated her basically into saying, I'm gonna, you better call this because I'm about to go score points. That was a really interesting to see that happen. Yeah, you can see a little bit of that uh, psych out with the jammers when they get that close together. And when their skill level is starting to elevate to that, then you're gonna see a lot more kind of game faces. All right, and coming through, Kim Bustable has already come through. That inside move. She'll do that quite a bit on those. The very start of the jam, she'll just work the inside, and before you know it, she's out in front of everyone else. That's right. Verta Breaker is the non-lead jammer, but she is not giving up. She is getting herself right back around the pack. She's got to come through and at least try to and score. And Kim Bustable called it before the score. There you go. Again, that's what I can say that I've seen the Juno Roller girls working on is that smart on-track strategy. They're not using a bench coach or anybody. They're making those decisions based on the awareness Quite of the track. Quite a wallop there out to the outside of the track there we're watching as uh, most, <laughs> most of the players were down. <laughs> Start of the next jam coming up here. And uh, only about a minute left in this period and uh, uh, Money Honey, we're going to be able to get a chance to get a little bit of the backstory of a few of these uh, skaters and even some one of the refs as well. Uh, we'll uh, actually, you'll be talking a non-skating official. Not quite the stripes, but the pink shirts. Okay. Someone who's working on scoring. That's and, Shorty. Uh, so Shorty's coming through right now. Ooh, nice wall of uh, Kylie Wyoti. Oh, hot it dam. knocked inside. Very good. Kylie Wyoti. That and now she's having to work from the back again. So Hypnagoria is out in front, but not declared lead. So Shorty Moreno got five points and stopped that jam. I believe. And we're gonna this, maybe do gonna one more jam, one more jam for the for the period. Peach Clobbers want to hear it from the crowd here. I see uh, head ref Chicken Hawk shaking his head. Not going to happen. That's it. That's the end of the first period. And a really exciting to see all the action happening in that first period. I mean, with all the different skaters out there, we, weren't, we didn't know what quite to expect. Uh, I'd say that the people that, uh, of the new skaters, Hypnagoria and... Um, Shorty Morena were really uh, standouts as far as uh, uh, new skaters to the Juno Roller Girls who really made an impact. Yeah, and then I would definitely say as far as the vets, I mean, uh, no surprise whatsoever that we saw Kim Pustable up there. Uh, definitely impressed by Verta Breaker's growth as a skater. Uh, you know, the Sleigh Bells and, you know, who are in the white and the uh, Reindeers in the red. They're All one right, league, but you can definitely see the competition tonight oh, yeah. in this mashup. Oh yeah, give no quarter here. The score right now is 55 to 93, and uh, with the uh, sleigh bells in white in the lead, and the reindeers uh, certainly not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. It's definitely not out of it. Every single one of these jams has been very competitive, and it's definitely seemed like there's, there's no blowout in the making here. This is uh, two fairly evenly matched teams. Right now the score is uh, showing right. that the sleigh bells just have a slight advantage. That's so, right. Hey, you got a chance to talk to a few of these folks uh, right before the uh, bout started. Really interesting stuff. Um, some of them, some of the folks you talked to, were they all new to uh, the, uh, the, ska the skaters that uh, you saw tonight that I got to talk to in an interview you'll see in a few seconds. Uh, that was uh, Hawk Block of the Reindeers, and that was Shorty Morena. And then I also spoke to Hypnagoria. And then I got the chance to speak to kind of the behind the scenes. I call him Team Other. You and I are Team Other. Yeah. That's uh, Yosemite Slam. He's tonight's non-skating official head NSO. Sounds great. Let's take a look at those interviews right now. Yes, that's Juice Pop. I'm here with Shorty Morena of the Sleigh Bells. So how I'm here to just ask you how you got into roller derby and what uh, – what, how, what are you thinking about getting out of this tonight? Um, I started nine months ago, and I just got into the intro class, and I was like, I just want to skate. And I never thought about joining in until I started learning the rules and stuff, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I want to do this. And I'm just hoping to not get hurt tonight and have fun and win. That's my last one. If we don't win, you know, I'm going to have fun anyways. I'm going to love it. So. That's great. Uh, when What do you do in your real life? Your everyday um, life. I'm a paraeducator at the school, and I also work at JYS. So I work mainly with kids. 
and I love it. Uh, I also have here Yosemite Slam. He is a uh, head NSO, and what is your job for tonight? Uh, tonight I'll be the penalty tracker. Okay. So what, is that? what does that do? I'll be tracking all the times that the girls get themselves in trouble and send them to the end and, and uh, make sure that they're in the penalty box for long enough. What kind of penalties would they end up in the box for? Um, cutting the track or um, multiplayer blocking, um, blocking outside of the zone, um, breaking the pack is a pretty common one. Um, elbowing, uh, they, they like to do low blocks if they fall down on the ground. Um, a lot of times they get called for low block. Um, that's pretty much the main penalties that I've been seeing so far this year. Have you ever done anything with roller derby before? Uh, no, I came last year and watched a couple of bouts and um, I saw online that they were looking for people to come in and be volunteers. So I emailed and asked if I could come in and volunteer. Now as an NSO, that's known as a non-skating official, what other types of NSO positions are there within the league and what kind of volunteer jobs are there that other people could get involved with? Well, we've got one scoreboard operator and two scorekeepers, and then we have um, two penalty trackers, a wrangler, which is the person who makes sure that everybody goes into the box for their penalties. Um, and then we've got two other people who can record penalties for us um, who relay everything to me from the outside refs. Fantastic. So there's quite a bit of uh, work that can be done that is not on skates. Yes. There's a lot of stuff for people who are uncoordinated like me who cannot be on skates. And me as well to a certain extent. Now, Shorty, uh, how do you feel about having the uh, refs out there watching you? I, n I have seen you skate. So what is your number one reason for ending up in the box? Um, usually it's out of play. Like I just forget that I'm too far away from my peeps and then I just hit because I want to hit and I can't control myself. But yeah, I get all kinds though. All, ki all kinds of penalties. Yeah. All right. So we should be seeing some pretty good contact action from you tonight. Yes. And as far as the contact action, are you going to be jamming or are you going to be a blocker? Mainly going to be blocking, but um, they're going to put me in as a jammer too. I just got to get more endurance, but I love jamming. That's my favorite. So this, you are a fresh meet, and this is your first, first bout. So have you skated on this floor before? Um, I did a few boot camps here, which it's fun. We fly on these floors, so it's really excited. Tell me about the boot camps a little bit. It was, it's great. We skate for a lot of hours and sweat and learn a lot of stuff in like one or two days and meet a lot of cool girls. So it's really good. Every time I get a chance to go to a boot camp, I'm there. Now, I have been to a boot camp here as well, so I know what you're talking about on the fast floors. Uh, I'm going to go back to you for a second, Yosemite Slam. Uh, one of the final questions, how did you get your name? Well, I am a huge fan of Yosemite Sam. I actually have a Yosemite Sam tattoo. So I thought, why not call myself Yosemite Slim? And Shorty, how did you get your name? You can tell I'm really short, and Morena means tan, and I'm from Argentina. So I wanted to throw a little Spanish in there. That's why it's the sun for the Argentinian flag and the U.S. flag. Well, for a teammate, you're definitely going to be one to watch out on the floor, and I'm looking s forward to getting back to the second half after this, and we'll see you more on the track. Fun to hear from those folks, uh, both the skater and someone who just gets involved and is able to be involved as someone who's a fan and now more involved in, in the sport. It was great talking to him because you can see, you know, what drives them to be a part of the league and what drives them in this, in this sport, and that's all across. It was also really fun just to interview them and get to talk one-on-one -on -one with them. A lot of times we see them in a group and we don't get to right. find out who they are. I mean, Shorty's Argentina. She's representing tonight. Yeah, that was great. Really fun. Well, that was uh, uh, Sleigh Bells. Shorty's one of the Sleigh Bells. You got also a chance to talk to uh, one of the uh, reindeers as well, or a couple that, of the reindeers as well, right? That's right. Ha uh, hawk block, fresh meat. Also, really important thing you'll learn. You can talk about that for a second after we've seen it. And then Hypnagoria, which we've talked about a lot talked already. Talked about her tonight. a lot. She's uh, been one of the featured jammers tonight. So we'll check that out right now. Let's watch it again. 
I'm here with two skaters from the Juno Roller Girls mashup season three, seasons beatings, uh, sleigh bells. And can you tell me your name? My name's um, Elizabeth Hawkins, but my skater name is Hawk Block. We're on the reindeers, but uh, my name is Hypnagoria number zero zero. Red for the reindeers. I will remember that. Hopefully I've remembered that before we've started. <laughs> Uh, so I just wanted to get a second to talk to you guys about how you got started. So I'll start with you, Hawk Block. What right. got you started in roller derby? Um, I actually started in the intro to skating class um, in February, so it's not been very long. And then uh, just watching them play, I just got really interested in it, started uh, skating myself like with them. So an interesting aspect of your situation is that there was a recent policy change with the Juno Roller Girls. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how that affected your ability to play? Yeah, um, before the rules you had to be tw uh, 21 in order to bout and now they changed it to 18 and I am 20 so I'm their first skater to skate um, with them that's under 21. Fantastic. Is there a difference do you think between an 18 year old skater and somebody that is over 21? I'm not really sure, not quite um, over the age yet to tell you personally, um, but it's, I mean, it's fun regardless of your age, I think. Great. Well, and the other skater that we have here is Hypna Goria. She likes to go by Gori. Uh, tell me about your skating experience and have you, how long have you been playing with uh, the Juno Roller Girls? Um, I've been skating for almost two years now. My first bout was in May, so I've been skating for a little while, but not really on the track in public very much, so hoping to do well tonight. <laughs> and normally, what position do you normally play on the track? Um, I've been blocking until real recently, so I'll be jamming a little, a little bit tonight. And what's the difference between a blocker and a jammer? Uh, I'd say that skill-wise, they're really similar as far as how much you have to think about it. I, I don't think that athleticism makes a difference on either side, but yeah, I like it. Do you have a preference between blocking or jamming? No, I like them both. I don't care where I'm at, actually. <laughs> So, Gory, that's a versatile teammate is what you're saying you like to do. Yeah. So, how about Hawk Block? What is your favorite position? Um, I'm more comfortable with blocking. I'm going to be blocking tonight. Um, I haven't had much experience with jamming yet, but hope to get there one day. And you are a fresh meat player. You have been playing or skating since February, so yeah. this is your first it's bout. Yeah. And what are you hoping to have happen in your first bout? Um, I'm just hoping everything goes smoothly. I don't do anything like silly or uh, any make make any like strange mistakes that you shouldn't make on any simple mistakes. Simple mistakes. Uh, I will. I've been watching you skate. I've seen both of you guys skate in scrimmages, so I know that um, skating on scrimmage is a little bit different, a little bit more flexible. It's your learning time. So uh, tonight, you're skating in front of a crowd. How do you feel about that? It's much different than scrimmage. I've had um, people watch at scrimmage, but it's not the same as, as this here with all these people. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm, I'm super excited. And Gory, how do you feel about it? Uh, it's a little intimidating. I think that the adrenaline will make us a lot stronger, so I'm interested in seeing what everyone's going to bring to the track. It's not going to be usual for us. And I'm going to have one final question for both of you. How did you get your name? Um, it, it took a long time. Um, I was actually hanging out with a couple of friends, and we were just kind of going back and forth on names. And one of them said Hawk Block, and I, I liked it. It's it's funny, um, and it and it fits in with my last name, so Hawkins and Hawk. It's also a really strong name to have on the track. I mean, Blocker is in your name, so yeah. I think that you have something to aspire to as well. And Gory, how did you come up with your name? Um, Hypnagoria is a little wavy, I feel like. Um, Hypna is the first part of a scientific name for a butterfly, and I really love those. And uh, Goria is the last part of a word, Phantasmagoria. A uh, Tuffy Burgoon actually was talking to me about that, and uh, that's where I got that last part. All right, well, thank you so much for doing this interview, and I will see you back on the track.
every time we get to talk to these folks, I'm just kind of awed by how they got into the sport and how much they love the sport. I mean, how much it's just become a part of their personality. It is. You know, what I find actually interesting is after seeing these skaters on the track, they're so ready and they're outgoing and they're aggressive. And here, you know, they're just they're super nice, super <laughs> nice every day. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't hurt a You know, I want to hug both of them. You know, that's you know, the, so that's interesting that they can take on that persona while they're on the track. But in the everyday life, uh, you know, they're they're the people you see in the line behind the cop, you know, in the coffee shop. And and uh, so I like it. It's a nice development for the the person as a whole. That's what I see it as is that, you know, they can do whatever they do in their real life. Yeah. And then they can come out on the track and they can be those athletes that, that they they dream to be. It's an interesting thing too, because it's, uh, you know, these are folks that often come to Alaska, like a lot of us have, you know, that's an adventure in and of itself to be an Alaskan and c come to Alaska. And then to find this adventure of roller derby on top of it, it's an interesting combination of things. Yeah, I would definitely say that. I would definitely say that of all the skaters that I've seen, Alaska roller girls, all of them are some of the toughest get back up, get hit, get back up skaters. The Alaska women in general, I think, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's right, except for me. <laughs> You're pretty tough. I am. Don't sell yourself short money on you. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but I'm tough. I've got a tough mouth, yeah. <laughs> but a very soft tail end, so I'm not out there on oh, the track. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, let's talk about the, the about that we saw so far. Really interesting, very fast, I thought, and I, that might be a reflection of the new rules. I think it is. I also think that it's the maturity of the game as it's developed that nobody wants to watch a bunch of skaters standing still. That is let's a strategy that, that can happen. I mean, that is a way the being strategic, the blockers stop, they wait, it becomes a sort of slow motion thing, but that's certainly not the style of play we're seeing here. No, and I think at, uh, due to Juno Roller Girls uh, becoming WFTDA apprentice, I think they want to showcase their skill, which standing still, although is a tough skill on skates, but standing still is not showing what they can do, how aggressive they can be, how much teamwork and strategy they can put on, on the track. And, you know, and it doesn't score. Standing still doesn't score. It reminds me of when the uh, when ba in basketball in the NBA, they put in the 24-second clock. You know, right. the fans want action. People want to see action happening. You could have a strategy. There was used to be a strategy called the four corners defense, you know, offense, where you just stand in four corners and pass the ball around. But right very boring, very <laughs> yes. boring. Much more fun with a shot clock in there to, yes. uh, to have it. And that's what's happening with that one whistle right off the line, jammers are coming right off the line. And uh, then I also think it plays the style for the jammers that happen to be on these two teams as well. Definitely, the jammers on these two teams are fast, and, but they also do not shy away from contact. Uh, they're not so much as worried about, uh, oh my gosh, is my defense working for me? They are just, I'm going for it. And that's what we're seeing tonight. They are busting through walls. Uh, the defense is still solid, so it's not easy, and you can see that. Uh, I definitely am excited about this game tonight. It's a great way to open up the Junior Roller yeah, Girls season. Very fun. We have another bout coming up in February, so they're going to take the holidays off, and then we will see them back here again. So this is going to be what is left with us for the Christmas holiday. Which yeah. is, you know, what a great <laughs> opener. Season's beatings. Let's, let's eat, let's have presents, and let's get back down to Derby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Really fun stuff. So some of the standout players uh, that we saw in the first uh, period. So, of course, uh, Jean-Claude Hot Dam, always a uh, solid, solid player. I thought from a blocking standpoint, T was a was a per, per, you know, one of the players we kept talking about really providing she solid likes defense. To be, she likes to be up at the front of the pack, which means that she is the last line of defense. So you're going to see T engaging those jammers pretty much every time. On the other side of the line, Just Julie is sort of that defensive leader. Always, always. Just Julie has a really good uh, ability to be wherever she needs to be she can fill that hole she can block that jammer definitely uh, is a center of the pack when when she's on the track yeah it's exciting to watch then this fresh meat that's out there uh, uh, Goria who you got to talk to an interview a, a star a star in the making out there definitely she she you know I always compare skaters not 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 as not as how they're good or bad but I compare skaters in style and I see a lot of uh, some previous skaters so 
You know, well, I see a lot of let me, skill let me, set. Let me, let me try. Yes. So I, I see in Goria, I see a lot of combustible. I see combustible. Right. I see a former Juno Roller Girls, Jendetta. Okay. Okay, you know, yeah, right, very, Jendetta, yeah. Very uh, athletic, very fast, yeah. very focused. Right. Definitely combustible. And we see that also with Shorty Marina, another fresh skater. Uh, she has a lot of uh, Catapult Kim tendencies in terms that she's low to the ground, she's fast. She is in control. And strong. I mean, that's another thing is she just has a lot of strength. You can see it when she takes hits and when she delivers hits. Yeah, and she's really great. Again, you know, vet skaters, mayhem. Yeah. Vertebraker. I mean, there's not a single skater, Kylie Bayote, there's not a single skater on the roster for either team that I am not, I, I just am enjoying watching them. I can focus on each one of them and see what, what they're bringing to the table for their team. Well, thanks for doing those interviews as well. It's really exciting and fun to watch those interviews as well. Great job on those. We're going to get to the second uh, period here. The skaters are now taking the track for the second period. They're warming up a little bit here. What do you think is going to have to happen for the um, sleigh bells to catch up to the reindeers? I'm sorry, for the reindeers to catch up to the sleigh bells. It's about a 40-point difference right now, 55 to 93. So if a team's behind like that, what do they start doing? I think they need to maximize those uh, penalties that, or minimize those penalties on the second time, the second half. Uh, I think they need to uh, rest their skaters if they need to rest. Go ahead and, you know, since it's a short roster, you know, they need to... Um, let the skaters self-regulate who can be in more than one jam at a time because with only three being able to take a break at each time the, many skaters are in more than one jam and uh, as they warm up here on the uh on the flat track you see uh you know the camaraderie between them all all the different teams of course talking to each other all the different players and different teams they consider themselves i think one big team really but when they're out on the track and when the whistle blows Man, they're on two different teams, and it gets competitive right away. Uh, but really fun to watch what's uh, what's been happening out there. Um, some of the other standouts that I've been noticing, of course, Peach Clobber. I mean, that's something. She's someone who uh, every time out there that she's out there, you have to pay attention to her. And as we saw, even when she's not the lead jammer, she starts really dictating the action. She does. Uh, even you know, and that's a smart strategy as as a non-lead jammer is to just force that jammer's hand. So she's not going to let up. She's going to get up right next to them, and she's going to make them call it so that they can't get any more scores. That's a great, great offensive strategy, even if you're not a lead jammer. So what do you think the locker room talk was here for, uh, especially the reindeers, 40 points behind or 38 points behind right now? What do you think they're talking about doing? You know, I would love to be a fly on the wall in <laughs> in the room when when they go in on the halftime. You know, some theories of you know doing very zen, calming strategies. Nobody's yelling. Everybody's getting their fluids in. Uh, you know, other is some people just are going to be like, okay, we're just going to keep going. Yeah. Honestly, the game can change without without even knowing. It. And is there a strategy where you can kind of sit on a lead? Is there a little bit of a way to extend a lead uh, for the for the sleigh bells? I, I think that there is. I don't think that that's a strategy that the Juno Roller Girls as a whole is is going to burn up time. They certainly can, but it's that's not. It's just not as interesting of a game, and I think they it would, would be rather a strategy play. where if they were uh, determined lead jammer, they would extend that jam for the full uh, one and a half minutes or two minutes. Well, only if the oppo I mean, in my opinion, only if the opposing jammer is sitting in the box. Right. Otherwise, it's just it's score trade for score trade. So right. Right. You may get up two, but you could get up two and call it. Yep. Or you can get up four, they get two, you're still getting two. All right. Here we go. Let's applaud these roller girls as they come around. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, sleigh bells in white. And uh, they, you know, I wouldn't say a commanding lead, as you say, that one jam can uh, can change everything. But they, they've been in control of this uh, of this bout for about the half of the first period. I'd I say. I would say half of the first yeah. period. You know, sometimes when they go into the half, people get centered. They, you know, they say, okay, we've played. Uh, this is where we're going to fix it. You know, that's the other opposite. Is right. Instead of going in and being quiet, they sit down and they do a strategy, a mid-game strategy. How are we going to change it up? How are we going to make it better? I think the reindeer, since we have Captain Just Julie and co-captain uh, April Mayhem, I think that's a great dynamic as far as in the, in, you know, as far as the direction of, of how their team might be. They they both have a very holistic view of of how they're going to play, and that's as a team. Now it'll be interesting to see how fatigue sets fits in here with only eight players per roster. Um, 
Yeah, I would expect that the, the skating might slow down just a little bit, especially when the with the jammers really getting out there and sprinting. But is that am these, I wrong? Uh, these athletes practice three times a week, two hour practices minimum. I don't know for sure that uh, the endurance is low. I think that I think they're going to do actually pretty good. I don't I don't think we're going to see them let up on that at all. Okay. All right. Well, but we'll I, watch it here. Know, we'll see what happens. As we're ready for the first jam of the second period here, the period's a 30 minute period. Each jam is a maximum of two minutes per jam. And uh, right now the score is 55 for the reindeers and 93 for the sleigh bells. Sleigh bells are in white and the reindeers are in red. And we're getting ready for the first jam of the second period here. Another half hour of roller derby action coming to you from Centennial Hall in Juneau, Alaska. And I'm definitely uh, seeing some smiles in the, uh, in the in the on the line up there between the red and blue i see hot damn and bitter glitter just chatting it up right next to each other i want to also say that you can follow us along on 360north.org our uh, web site uh, manager heather bryant is blogging live blogging along with uh, the action that's happening right now we'll have to get a derby name for heather if she's for he yeah we got to get a derby name for heather that's right okay and um so that you can follow along that on 360north.org and that's a place you can also if you're watching this and you want to share what's happening right now with friends who are outside of alaska and aren't able to watch on 360 north on uh, television you can tell them to go to 360north.org and they can live stream it and watch this with you and uh you guys can sit there and together blog on the action i Change you know blog i notes. have been on 360.360north.org when i was on vacation Watching great, the great website. It is. Yep. It is. So, so well done. All right, done. we have the game on. Here comes uh, April Mayhem, none other than April Mayhem out there, and Peach Clobber. And there's and her. There's that smile. smile. <laughs> Coming through. Now, I would actually say that, I would say this has actually been a relatively quiet bout for April Mayhem so far. What, we, what do you think about that? She's, she can really turn around a, a, a bout in That's one right. jam. She can. And, I think, you and know, that, that jam hasn't quite happened that yet. That has not. You know, she definitely had a, I think she was the first reindeer to the box on the first jam. Uh -huh, yeah. So it started out as a power jam. That might have slowed her, backed her up a little bit on yep. her aggressive, being okay. aggressive. Okay. What do we have on the jammer line for the next jam of... Oh, we, we have Verta Breaker out there. Going and up combustible. against Combustible, yeah. Now, so what do you think about how it's being called so far? Do you feel like it's being called uh, kind of a tight bout as far as the refs calling the... I think the or? refs are very, very good at what they do. Oh, well, that's uh, certainly non-committal. <laughs> They're team other, so I have nothing to say because they will be watching this. <laughs> well, I know. I'm just wondering, do you think that they're calling it, sort of calling it everything, or do you think they're letting them play a little bit more? Yeah, they're, uh, the refs here have taken some boot camp training, and they, are, they, they really focus and try hard, and I think that they are fair and impartial. Again, I can't can. get you to. No. I cannot. This is, <laughs> I cannot do it. Well, here's a replay of that action here as we're coming around. And you can see just Julie pivoting around and just getting out there, trying to get the hind end out to her, but she just can't get it. Meanwhile, uh, the other jammer, uh, Vertebraker, out of bound. Back, Back to live action now. And this uh, jam just about to start. Here we go. It's the... We have uh, OB1, number OB1. That's Peach Clobber up against, it looks to be Jean... Nope, Hypnagoria. Hypnagoria, okay. This is one of the rising stars up against. Just Julie just went down. Julie went down, but Peach Clobber once again in the familiar position of being a lead jammer oh, and dictating the action. Right at the front, oh, T Tripper taken out. Hypnagoria. Hypnagoria back in, not quitting. Meanwhile, Peach Clobber, oh, came in a little too fast there, coming in hot. And just couldn't cut the corner, and meanwhile now she cuts, uh, she stops the jam there. That's the third jam of the second period, and uh, Peach Clobber calls it there. Have that was some exciting sure. action. She came in, a, she came in, a, I wouldn't say out of control, but just was a little bit too fast to control her turn there. That's right. So Peach goes, goes and takes a seat, and in her place for the sleigh bells is Kim Bustable, and then up against a Jean Claude Hot Dam. Here they come. Next uh, jam about to start here. You can see the strategy. What's some of the strategy about the lineup there that's happening with the uh, with the 
Looks like the sleigh bells kind of lined up more on the outside. That was where the, uh, of course, that's where the, ooh, a big hit there. Jean-Claude Hot Dam went down big. You know, some of the strategy to start off is that they try and pack in as tight as line as they can. Yeah, okay. So you'll see that right from the beginning. Jean-Claude Hot Dam had a hard fall there, but got back up and is now skating strong. Kim, Kim Bustable, Bustable is calls on the it. floor calling it off. And, <laughs> and John We're going to take a look at the replay there. Is, here comes that hit. Ooh, just got, Julie. Julie got turned around and then a... Oh, just a trip. It really was just a trip. She got caught up a little bit in what was happening between just Julie and, uh, and Combustible and just got her skates a little tangled around there. Back to live action now with the fifth jam about to start. And uh, there we go with that single whistle. There it is, beginning of the jam. And we got April Mayhem going up. Oh, Shorty Moreno is Shorty jamming Moreno for uh, got, the sleigh bells. Got knocked out there. She's got to come up fast. She's got to, she might be able to catch it. She didn't quite get her, but now she's all the way through. So she also is on the same lap there as uh, April Mayhem. Right, here comes Shorty right behind her. Yeah. She's not going to let her Look at the line that much. she can cut there. She goes way outside on the flat part and then cuts way in on the inside. Gets a lot of speed yeah. coming through that inside corner. And April Mayhem saw that and cut it with uh, two points scored. But sure. uh, here we here we see what that while, uh, uh, for instance, in that because Shorty Moreno was able to get up, challenge that lead uh, jammer, made uh, April Mayhem call that jam, and the uh, differential in the score is still high with 105 to 58 now the score. Reindeers trying to catch up to the sleigh bells that are uh, nearly 50 points ahead of them. Yeah, well, I think uh, Peach Clobber is back and through the pack already and barely after the whistle blows. I would have to say she's the high scorer so far of the, have just of Julie the bout. Just, yep, and just Julie just did a little uh, assist with Vertebreaker just to get and out of the pack. T tried to take Vertebreaker out there but missed it and uh, almost came into the scoring table. Good skating by Vertebreaker. As you say, the skill level of Vertebreaker, you can noticeably see has gone up in the past couple of uh, seasons of uh, watching her skate. Always dynamic and always full on, only one speed. You know, she's but now, she, now the skill is developing and developing and you're really it is, seeing her. I, I'm seeing her more as a bullet being shot out of a gun. <laughs> yeah, really, right. I mean, she just is shooting out of those corners and coming back in very, very wide in the straightaways and then cutting all the way across in the next, next turn. All right, coming up next, we got uh, Combustible going against April Mayhem. Both really good blockers, and who gets that? They're giving it to Ooh, Kim Combustible. They They're giving it to Combustible. Here's Combustible lead jammer, and she calls it off. I don't. I. I couldn't. I could. That was a photo finish of who was going to be lead jammer there. Now, what does is there always one lead jammer declared, or how does that work? If it really it seems like they both busted through at the same moment. Well, I. You know, the refs kind of have a. They have to you decide. Know, they have to decide. Well, I mean, it's a lot of times clearly somebody's come through. If sure. not, neither one they can, neither one can be declared lead jammer. And in this replay, you can definitely see that. Uh, Kim Bustable was declared lead jammer. And she's there. actually asking in that replay. She's like, me? Is it me? Yeah, because she wants to call it <laughs> yep. because they were neck and neck. Back to live action now, and Just Julie is battling against Shorty, Shorty Moreno. Moreno, but she is through and has been declared lead block, lead jammer. We have Ver Ju uh, Just Julie assisting Vertebreaker and clearing out the path for her to get through. And Vertebreaker's up against a wall of white. And that's just where the Vertebreaker, just the just the size of Vertebreaker is hard, it can be hard for her to bust through. Yeah, Vertebreaker when she doesn't have the pushing. When she doesn't have the speed behind her, that seems to be, that's her, that's her top weapon is that speed. And Shorty and is back around and calls it. That was a good, tough fight for Shorty it to get was. through that last wall. Also tough for Vertebreaker to get through there as well, and she did battle through there. So really interesting watching both of that develop. So 58 to 113 is now the score. Sleigh bells are still in the lead here with the reindeers trying to make up ground, but not really gaining any traction yet. Uh, they need that. They need a couple of those breakout jams where they were maybe uh, the other jammers in the sin bin. Uh, that yeah. kind of thing. They need a couple of shutout jams here to happen to get them back in this. You know, they could, I haven't seen the penalty board, but they could be playing it a little bit safe, uh, the reindeers, so that they don't end up with penalties. But 
The other side of it is the sleigh bells are being really aggressive. They're putting Peach on the line as a jammer, and she's guaranteed. She's a known. She's known. She's a crowd favorite, too. You can hear the crowd roar every time Whoa, she gets big through. Pile big pile, up, big pile up that Peach had to get negotiate through. Oh, and another one down. Bitter glitter down and it's right like back up. And there is uh, Peach Clobber calling Peach's, that jam. Peach's face, I have to say, she's like, I could do this all day, ladies. That's <laughs> 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 pretty much what I think she was saying as she was walking off the track. Yeah. There it is. Life's a peach. She's showing it. Life's a peach. <laughs> Crowd's getting into it. They want to pull, you know, they want to be excited for their players. They know these girls. These are skaters that they work with, that they see every day. So it's nice to have a crowd be in there and supporting them. Fun to see the different uh, players that have different followings, people bringing the signs. Yep. Not oh, just not Hypnagoria. just family and friends, but just people who are really fans. And Hypnagoria is gaining fans quickly here with the Juno Roller Girls crowd she because is she is Jammer dynamic. It looks like Look Southeast at that Man on the outside. Well done. Is in the box. So this is the power jam the re the reindeers needed. They've put Hypnagoria in as a jammer. She's calling it so they can start another jam while the opposing team's jammer sleigh bells. Uh, Southeast Manhandler is still in the box. They want to get April Mayhem there on the line who's so fast and as, you, as we've right. been talking about this could be one of these uh, jams right here where they get sort of a shutout out jam and April Mayhem might be their best opportunity to score a lot of points. She's a fast skater and can really cut through the blockers like, like a knife through, like a hot knife like through butter sometimes. Say, yeah, yep, it's amazing. Hot knife through butter. Yeah, definitely this is what the reindeers were hoping for, is to put uh, Sleigh Bell in the box so that they can get a power jam and do some major gaining of points. So that was five points. trying to get through as quickly as possible. This strategy needs to incorporate her getting out there quickly. Yep. So now the pack is reforming. She's coming back around, and they're going to try to get her to push push those players forward and get them out of bounds. Notice she how just fights through. The thing about April Mayhem is so interesting is that she is long that and is lean. Five. Very strong, but just keeps her feet. When she's working through the blockers, she has the ability to just keep her feet about her and kind of ride up high. She does yep. that stutter step and just always seems Ooh, to really be able to keep her feet. There she is one time more time to through. Now, by my count, that's 10 points that she's that's already correct. got. correct. 10 points, two times around, that's 10 points. Uh, the jammer for the opposing team, Sleigh Bells, is actually standing in the box. She will be released within a second. That's Southeast so Manhandler, that's 15 points. points there. And Southeast Manhandler still needs to make her initial pass before she can score, so Mayhem's probably going to Mayhem's asking keep her it. that right now, too. She's asking the refs that now, too. If she has to make her initial yep, pass. If she has to make her initial pass or not, and now, and now she's not able to make her initial pass with great blocking coming from the uh, reindeers. And we did it again. That so that's another. That's 20 points that I'm counting. Actually, 20. She did pass the other jammer. 19. Let's 19. See. Okay, 19. And now once again scoring more points here while the other jammer still is held up. Yeah, she has not. Southeast Manlander has not come through. So these are again shutout points. This is that jam that they needed right here. Is <laughs> yes, what's it happening. Is. Yes, it April is. Mayhem. That's Scoring points. Five points. 24 points as called by the ref. One more time through for April Mayhem here. She's getting through there and she has not fallen down once. Kept yep, her feet. She's there got she about goes. 12 seconds left on the clock. Threw she's probably going to go ahead and run that time out and see how many more points yes, she can get. Yes, absolutely. Sleigh Bells would try and speed up the pack, but they're just holding back and keeping that wall solid. And That's she's the end of got it. And that's the jam. Take wow. Well, that is uh, exciting to watch that. Take a look Here at comes replay. April Mayhem coming up strong with a hit. Well, that's a hit to Southeast Manhandler to the outside while April Mayhem and Southeast Manhandler goes down while April Mayhem is scoring the points. So with the score now 93 to 117. Okay. As you were saying, Money Honey, I doubted it for a minute. But as you were saying, man, keep a look at that score. One because jam. Yes, one, one jam. jam. One jam made the difference there. So 93 to 117, they need another one like that to really be back to be able to be vying for uh, the lead well, here. Right now, the reindeers have two blockers in the box. So they're going to start short so the advantage could be seen as to the sleigh bells. So we'll see, because that means there's only two blockers on the track. There's a timeout on the, uh, on the floor right now, another 30 seconds or so before the next jam sets up. 
But uh, a time, I would say this is maybe as we were talking about that fatigue factor, those, that was a long jam right there, and there's only eight players per team. So some of those players that were out on that last jam might have to be in this next jam as Definitely, well. Definitely, you know, with a timeout, they might as well take advantage, get some rest. They can certainly do that. You know, another thing that's happening is that when it's a power jam, the pack slows down just naturally. They don't want to move too far and waste their energy when the jammers just going to go and do circles. Right. So, you know, there is that advantage kind of taking a rest on the track. So we have up on the jammer line, getting ready as soon as the timeout is finished. We have hot damn 10 milligrams for uh, reindeers, and then it looks like combustible for the sleigh bells. And no surprise, it's a little light on the uh, yep. reindeer's blockers, so before you can burst will made it right through. Lead jammer. Meanwhile, Jean-Claude Hot Dam on her tail though, and yep. coming up fast here. We fast. have Maine Alaska and Verta Breaker as the uh, reindeer's blocker. So what's happened here? They're resetting it. Uh, they, she you know, she became lead jammer, and then they absolutely they just, called just, just they called it. Okay. She called it. Right. Four well, for the sleigh bells. Setting up for the zero for the reindeers. So 93 to 121 is now the score. Sleigh bells still in the lead here. They uh, reindeers do need another one of those kind of power jams to come up to really make up the. And with I'll tell you something, with Peach Clobber out there as the lead jammer being declared every time, it's going to be tough for the reindeers. Yep, Mayhem is uh, doing some double time skating to catch up to her. Again, the pack is pretty light. Uh, we're almost full on both teams. We have just Julie in the sin bin right now for the reindeers, so reindeers are down one blocker. And uh, Peach Clobber calls that one. Now tell me a little bit about this. Uh, how is it that the, how does the, the blocking lines, how do those lines move? How they move it? as one, hopefully. Yeah. So how, uh, does, why, how is that? To, Tell me how that's determined. You know, there's a certain. It has to do with these lines that are on the track. Well, here. sort of. I mean, those are the actual delineation lines for uh, 10 foot differences. Uh, those are to help the refs and kind of just to see as long as people are in play or out of play. I mean, as far as the blocking walls for the skaters, they line up kind of staggered. They do some stuff called recycling where the person in the back tries to push the skater towards the out. Uh, the outside of the track, and then they recycle through so that even if they do come back in, they're blocked by another skater. And spe speaking of blockers, Bitter Glitter just went down there after putting on two good blocks and really holding up Vertebraker for a while there. Vertebraker is not lead jammer, and uh, Combustible is lead, gestional, lead jammer on that, and uh, she has called that jam. So we have, I'm looking for the jam refs. I don't see anything held up for reindeers, so that's zero for reindeers. They're still sitting on 93. That's after coming up quite a bit from yeah. Mayhem's jam. And then Sleigh Bells actually got uh, three points up on the board, so it's 93 to 128. Sleigh Bells have uh, had that one jam that they really uh, got a lot of points scored on. They got dinged up in that one a little bit, but uh, since then have uh, kind of regained and are, uh, are, are still in a commanding lead here. Uh, but as we saw in that one jam, that can change, that can change uh, very quickly. The big thing I think is, as we've been talking about it, the important thing for Sleigh Bells right now is to stay out of that sin bin. Yes, definitely. Uh, sleigh Bells have actually been doing pretty good. I think the reindeers penalties might be what's hurting them a little bit as far as the scores because you have to understand one of the parts of the rules is as soon as the jammer hits the opposing team's first blocker, meaning the first person that they've come into, that person becomes that point plus whoever is in the box. Those are ghost points. So if you've got two blockers sitting in the box and the opposing jammer comes in and passes that first blocker, she's three points. Oh. So, you know, there, there's a point there where you're nothing but a point if you're sitting in the box. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're not helping anything. Nope. Now, the thing that's been hard, I think, and is going to be an adjustment probably throughout the season is this adjustment to the rule changes where 
the, the majors are being called, the minors are not being called at all, and now it's uh, now it's just majors. So you spend more time in the, you might be spending more time in the sim bin. That's right. So uh, reindeers have yet another uh, advantage in this jam. They've got combustible sitting in the box for the sleigh bells, which means it is a power jam. Power jam and for April Mayhem. Strategy is really good by the reindeers by putting Mayhem in as the lead jammer. She another just five flips points. right around. Another five points for her right there. Right. And she's coming back around for another. So this could be so that next jam. There's definitely some that action by the reindeers. Up in the pack to clear it out for mayhem. So it's close to 15 minutes left in this uh, in this uh, entire bout, so there's plenty of time for these teams to even back up with a couple more jams like this, and April Mayhem looking to cause a little more damage here. Right now the score, the running tally, 103 to 128, so just a 25 point difference now. And April Mayhem's through again with another five, five points. points. Now, Kim Bustable is standing in the uh, Aurora Project sin bin, so she has re-entered the pack and she is ready to make her initial pass, which means Mayhem can keep going, does not have to feel pressure just yet to call it off. And just Julia uh, holding the wall there against Kim Bustable. And Kim Bustable is really having a hard time coming through. However, so is April Mayhem. Both that's right. teams. Mayhem's working it, definitely. And Kim Bustable breaks through, and that's gonna mean April Mayhem's gonna call it. Yep, she's gonna call it. Yep. So take a look at that scoreboard there. Well, 128 to 108 now is the running tally on the scoreboard and another one of those jams that they've needed. Actually 112 to 128 now as the score is updated. Yep. The Mayhem's, reindeers catching up. Mayhem's first uh, score run was 24 points. The score run on this jam is 19 points. Interesting and how we were saying at half, right as we came out of halftime, she was a little bit quiet so far. And not, uh, anymore. not anymore, that's right. I am sure they have not mic'd uh, 360north.org into the dressing room. That's a little bit of motivation for them there. That's right. <laughs> What's up on the next jam here? We got Shorty as a jammer. She's being held back by... Uh, oh, she's right into our broadcast booth here. She came right, right at just us. Just Julie just careened her yes. right into the corner there. And she calls it. She's lead jammer and she calls it. So, what's the score, score difference? 16 points, is that correct in, yep. in my math? That is one jam easily. Oh yeah, that's it's 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 now we an even it's now an even bout. Any second, yep. we have 12:50 uh, some odd minutes left in the second half, and that will be it. And Peach Clobber against Vertebreaker here. This could be one. Peach Clobber has been fairly dominant in this match so far. So I, we'll I, you see. know, I don't think I remember seeing Peach and Verta up on the jammer lines. Against each other, yeah. Against each other, yeah, but I could be wrong. But I'd like to see this. This is a good matchup I'm watching for. Vertebreaker up first, and Vertebreaker looks like she Ooh, is through Peach first. Peach Clobber was pushed out to the inside, so she has to start over. That makes Vertebreaker lead jammer. And here comes Vertebreaker looking for some pump-up energy from the crowd, and she's coming in fast as you said speed shot out like a bullet out of a gun and there she goes scoring four points peach clobber's got plenty of speed as well but there is vertebreaker scoring a quick four against peach clobber uh, so there you go that's a quite impressive uh, vertebreaker taking it to peach clobber there I, I you know i definitely don't like to play favorites but <laughs> that's fun to you watch know, I, if i was a fan <laughs> in the stands i'd be going go verta but i'm also go peach so yeah absolutely great to watch both of those athletes going at each other with them okay. being a single league and no specific teams this is a great way to watch all your favorites at one time absolutely all right next jam coming up 116 to 128. This is jam number 18 of the period. There's about 12 minutes left in the entire period. Each jam could be a maximum of two uh, minutes. And April Mayhem. Mayhem is through first. Gets past Kim Bustable T. is up not too far behind her, but did not make it out as lead jammer. Oh, oh, but April Mayhem has been called for a penalty. That means the advantage is on sleigh bells. And this could be just as damaging, as much as much damage as the rain Deers had done in the past few jams with April Mayhem. This could be just as damaging. This this to jam the will actually go the whole time because there is no lead jammer and Combustible cannot call off the jam. So this is just an opportunity for the sleigh bells to pile on the points. That's right. Running tally right now is 116 to 133. Oh no, Combustible has been sent off. Combustible is off to the off to the box. Now what happened there? Was she gained she advantage? Was called she was called by a penalty. I'm not sure what the penalty was, but once Combustible hits the box, that means Mayhem's released from the penalty box and can re-enter the pack. And so the worm has turned. Yes. And here we go, an opportunity now again, for the reindeers to Mayhem score some points. Mayhem cannot call off the jam. She is not lead jammer. 
And here it comes. Oh, sounds like, uh, according to the house and answers that I can hear, it sounds like uh, Kim Bustable had a track cut and was sent to the box. Yes, okay. And I see Maiden Alaska blocker heading off to the box as well. So here it is now. Here's April Mayhem cutting in and scoring some more points. There's four more points scored by April Mayhem, and, and this is exactly what they need. It's actually five points you check to see the jammer in there the box. There you go, five points. Ghost point. So it's only a 12-point uh, bout right now, 133 to 121. And every time April Mayhem comes through, it's another five points. But Kim Bustable is, is back out on the track with, now. Uh, just Julie and back at it. I know from where I'm standing, we got less than 10 minutes for the 12 points spread on the board. Let's and another three Here points. And that is the jam. All right, so that's the jam. Another three points scored there, so by the sleigh bells. So it's 137, 125 is now the score. A 12-point bout, anyone's bout at this and point. See, in this situation, that jam, there was no lead jammer. It was nine to nine, which means their score differential has not changed, even though they did all that work for that whole two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Does not pay. <laughs> all right, now Verta Breaker. Oh, gets turned around by T. Yeah, as a but, vet, but T. But has been declared lead jammer. She's the lead jammer, but is not in the lead. That's right. As Shorty Moreno is up in front, but not the lead jammer. That's right. However, so Vertebraker. I'm not sure that Vertebraker is aware that she's lead jammer. She's taking a hit and in the pack and not doing anything about it. Now Shorty's coming into the back of the pack first. No, oh, and you can see the bench is trying to tell her to call it, trying to tell her to call it. She didn't know she was lead jammer. Their bench was jumping up and down. You can see Fatty Duke over there jumping up and down <laughs> saying, come on, call it, call it. You could hear the. Hear the crowd exploding. About and, eight and uh, a half minutes left in this, you know, maybe, maybe they're getting a little tired, maybe a little fuzzy headed, but I know these ladies are professional athletes to a certain level and they, they are gonna keep it straight. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's and here we go now. So we've got uh, Peach Clobber going up against uh, Hypnagoria. Hypnagoria. And Gloria has working her way through again, very impressive. Oh, but Peach Clobber got her on the inside as T held her up. Great block there by T to hold up Hypnogloria and allow her her uh, jammer to become the lead jammer. Yep, we had T, but I also saw Titan Young, number 25, coming in to assist had, All right. had uh, they still been holding her back. And this one's called? Reindeers. Got a couple of points there, 126, but the Sleigh Bells, I believe, also scored in that one, 142, yeah. 124 to 142, yep. So we have uh, April Mayhem again up on the jammer line, up against Kim Bustable again. And this one is one blocker is in the sin bin for the not a reindeers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is just uh, eight, is eight skaters on each team, and they are in lots of jams. Just about seven minutes left in this entire bout. And uh, the score is uh, just uh, just separated by about 18 points here. Yep. Mayhem is Lee Jammer, but Kim Bustable is double timing it, catch up with her. She's telling the pack to speed up and she calls it. So before a score being, can be taken by Kim Bustable. So that was interesting. She saw Kim Bustable coming up strong. So April Mayhem said, move it, move it, move yeah. it. Keep going, keep exactly. going, don't let her catch you. And, but she uh, did that to kind of give some time to gauge, probably, and then decide, make that decision to right. call it. That's communication within the teams. It's, uh, you know, some other larger leagues, these WFTDA, uh, high competitive leagues that the Junior Roller Girls are aspiring to play against, they have something called hive mind. And that's where they all think the same. They make those moves as one. Hive mind. Creepy. <laughs> Shorty Marina is uh, <laughs> out of the pack and declared lead jammer. She's super excited about that. She's got some nods. She's like, all right, I'm lead jammer. Let's do this thing. That's right. She's coming in for a scoring pass up against the uh, reindeers. Let's see what in. she can do. Whoa, Kylie she, Rayote and just Julie held her back just enough. She's got that ability, though, to keep her feet as well. Very coordinated skater. Exciting, having fun out there. She is on the power jam. The sleigh bells are on the power jam. Uh, Hypnagoria is sitting in the box and not standing. Shorty, I would have to say, is really, really 
she's smart about those rules. She's definitely knows she has to come back yeah. in behind. Yeah. And now Hot Dam's making her work for it too. And she calls it. What what a fun, fun jam. <laughs> it looks like they're kind of playing around a little bit. Yeah, they were having fun. Interesting strategy happening there. Just Julie moving back so that so that um, uh, Shorty had to come all yeah, the way back to skate in, skate in behind the pack, just making her work a little bit harder there. And uh, 124 to 151 is now the score. Again, the reindeers trying to make up ground there, but that was another example of a, of uh, one of the jams where the sleigh bells were able to push a little bit of an advantage. And that's again because of that sin bin. It is. Yep. So the penalties are killers. Yep. Right now it's Goria that's in the uh, penalty box so along with just Julie. So you know, a lot of you times got the reindeers out there with only three skaters going up against five. That's right. So you know, a lot of times people say, you know, why are you always in the box? Well, aggressive skaters get more attention. Sure. Yeah. Whether they're doing more penalties than maybe. A Meanwhile, here comes Goria out of the box like shot out of a gun. She's not the lead jammer. All she can do is catch up and try to score points, but uh, Peach, Peach is keeping an eye on her and calls the jam right there. That's right. But you know, I do like the effort that Hypno made just trying to get back around the track and get re-engaged in the pack. Yeah, absolutely. Really just putting it all out there, knows that the only thing that she can do to help her team at that point coming out of the penalty without being lead jammer is to just catch up to get the jam on and, uh, uh, and get it called. That's right. All right, just Julie still in the penalty box for uh, the reindeers. And we got Vertebreaker going up against Kim Bustable as the jammers. Let's see, we see. Kim Bustable uh, always seems to best through really quickly, but she doesn't this time. Vertebreaker behind just T just now. She's just pushing, behind pushing T. T is trying still to get holding T. her back. Try, oh, and now Meanwhile, the pack Meanwhile, Kim is Bustable, it looks like she might come through. Hot Dam is on Kim Bustable, holding her back as much as possible. This is a really good matchup to keep those. Whoa, jammers. and Verta Breaker's through. Declared lead. She is declared Verta lead. Verta Breaker's been declared lead. And, and she calls it. Called and it. just Julia's back in the pack. There is nobody in the box, so the next jam will be a full, full jam. We're going to take a look at a replay. And you can see that battle happening there oh, where Vertebreaker just pushing against T. A great play by T. Just a great play, Definitely. making herself wide and strong and just holding up Vertebreaker just enough. All right, back to live action now. Oh, we're back to a timeout actually is yeah, what's gonna like be happening on the floor. Team timeout. Looks like the reindeers taking that time, maybe taking a breath. <laughs> Absolutely, and this, you can see the sleigh bells there talking. This is the reindeers uh, bench. Talking it over, trying to figure out a strategy there. They got close, and uh, now it's slipped, slipped away a little bit, but still well within striking distance. 124 to 155 is the score. There's about three minutes left in this bout after this timeout uh, uh, you believe done. it's gone by that fast? It goes by, it goes by quick every time. Two I'm always amazed. Minutes. Every yeah. time it always goes by quickly. But uh, 124 to 155, what do you think needs to happen here? Uh, you know, I would really like to be out there in the center of the track taking a look at where they are all at with their penalties. Who's got four, who's got five? We know several of them, just Julie particularly, you know, just off the top of my head, have been to the box a few times, so, you know. So that's an important thing to keep in mind if they have if the six six penalties, uh, six majors, you're out of the bout. And does yeah. that mean that you're out, that you're short, that you're, sh you're short done. for every jam? Yes. Or, well, or no, 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 because there's eight players on the right, roster right, right now. Right. So, so you still have five people in for the jam. Yep. But uh, you're out of the you're out of the bout. The other thing I think that you know with three minutes left, I think everybody's probably just going to take a you know a little <laughs> a little just breath and yep. all right, we've got this first bout of our third season out of the way. Let's let's play. Let's yeah. have fun. So you know that is entirely possible, but that's for the reindeers to get back in this. What has to happen? I think they need to just get aggressive and, you know, I definitely would say put in their, you know, put in their good jammers, their top jammers, especially if we're only looking at maybe two, three more jams. So who I'd like to see up there on the jammer line, definitely Mayhem, definitely Verda, definitely, you know, 
those are solid jammers, and it looks like that's what they're going to do coming back from this uh, timeout here. John Claude, uh, we haven't seen John Claude be a, a jammer that much in this period. No, no, mostly in the first half. Yeah, yeah, mostly in the first half. So that that's someone that we could see come up as well. It looks like April Mayhem's who they're going to go with here in this power jam situation with with uh, Kim Bustable on the bench and in the sin bin. So here it goes. Well, here's something new, and this is where the reindeers can catch it up. This is exactly what they want. Mayhem is on a power jam. Combustible was sent to the box during that start of that timeout. So Mayhem is on the power jam, which we've already seen twice before what that's done for the reindeers. All right, here it comes. So now she's up again. This is the scoring pass right here, the first scoring pass. That's right. She is up on the scoring pass, and they are holding that wall. They are. Solid. They are. And the longer they can hold it, the the more time they're buying to get uh, to get uh, combustible back in the jam. So but that's a first pass through. in there for a solid minute. That's then five points. It is. So she's just got to find this, fight this little uh, box they here. They are holding her up. I mean, this is what they need to do. They just need to hold her so that she doesn't yep. have this yep. total free pass coming through. Bitter oh. glitter, uh, last line of defense. She just got a penalty because of. Bitter glitter. So she was out too far from the rest of the pack. That's right, and she, and she made she contact engaging. with, with uh, Mayhem, so she is now into the penalty box. And, but here comes Combustible coming through here now, She's trying to make it through. She's making her initial pass. This is not a scoring pass, so Mayhem's Just Julie got time. coming around. They've got great skaters in there against her. Jean-Claude, Just Julie. She is out of the engagement zone, and Mayhem is back into it. So this might be it for Mayhem. And Mayhem calls it there, but made up a lot of ground. Okay, it's getting close. There's only a minute 25 left in this bout. And uh, score is getting close here, 138 to 155. I think there might be a few more points going up for the reindeers here in just a second. I'm not sure about that. I think that looks like, yeah, here, here oh, we go. There they go. This is so much fun. It's like so, the slots in Vegas. I yeah. just want to watch the numbers roll. <laughs> 142 to 155 is now the score. 18 Very points scored score. in that jam. Very much within the range of uh, pulling this jam out. Only 13 points uh, separate like them here. We have Verda Breaker and Peach Clobber, and Peach is just scooting right through it, declared lead jammer. Well, that is going to really hurt here Reindeer's comes Verda, chances right here. Right on the track. With Peach Clobber in, con in control of the time. She and is in control taking her time. Of I think she's scoring. going for a stroll here. She's, she's looking to call it here. I think she's looking to not call it here and looking to maybe and just Verda skate Verda it out. And Verda just makes it through. The That's great makes it through on the inside. Very nice work. Verda Breaker scored, going around there, looking for a little help from sure, the crowd. Uh, what's going on here with Peach, why she's not calling it off? I think she's just skating it out, don't you think? She just, uh, there's only 17, 14 seconds she's left in the bout. Let's see what happens. She's just skating it out, but it's all, now it's a nine point bout. It's now a nine point bout. With the reindeers catching up here, Verda Breaker can get this close. There's only two seconds, one second left. Now there's a minute left in this jam, and at oh, this point. Verda got a cut and is off to the box. Oh. That's it. And there's 52 seconds left in this jam if Peach Clobber wants to continue to score it. At the next uh, time she calls it, it's going to be the end of this you know, bout. I thought I saw a cut called by an outside pack ref, but this is why I am not a Ah, ref. there you go. <laughs> it is still on the track. The score is still, still out going. There. It's one point difference. What is going to happen here? 154 to 159 now oh. being scored. Slate Bells have taken a little bit, Verda gone up Breaker a little bit. just went down up against a solid wall. That was a tough, tough hit right there. But, uh, She's gathering herself and going back up Titan there. Titan Young and Bitter Glitter and T. There's 17, 16 seconds left in this jam. It's now 163, 150, 168, 154. Verda Breaker against T. We've seen this, this battle before. Definitely just Julie coming in. Three, two, one. And that's the end of the jam, that and that's the, the end, end of the bout right there. So what's the final score? Peach and Verda. We don't know yet. Let's wait. We don't wait quite know yet. It looks like it's 168 official. to 154 is what the uh, scoreboard is showing right now. And we'll see if that's the final tally. Nope. Oh, it sleigh goes bells. up for the sleigh bells. Scored quite a bit there. With 25 points scored in that last uh, jam, 180 to 158. Sleigh bells over the reindeers in this official. official thank you, Chicken Hawk. Chicken Hawk just came score over and let us know. 158 
Sleigh Bells take it with 180. Seasons beatings? Seasons Definitely. Seasons beatings. That was an exciting bout. What do you what do you think? What are your impressions seeing I'm that excited. first bout? Yeah. Like February 15th needs to hurry up. Forget about Christmas. <laughs> Forget about eating at turkey time. I am ready for day after Valentine's. Let's play again. <laughs> Let's play again. Well, I think uh, everyone out there, it was really uh, fun to see. Great competition. Absolutely went down to the wire there at the end uh, as the reindeers caught up with uh, some great power jams. I always love this part. I where do. The players I love come it around when the players come around. This and get is the, the high fives. Part. Here we go. All right. High fives nice all around. Job, <laughs> Way to go. So much fun. So yeah. much fun. All right. That was great. All right. Well, thanks so much again, Money Honey. Such a good time doing this with you every time out here. Really fun to uh, see the huge crowd that showed out for showed up for this uh, first uh, bout of the season. I Exciting. think this is going to be a really good example of what's going to happen for the rest of the season. And as them becoming WFTDA apprentices for the women's flat track roller derby, we're going to just see them get better and better. It's an exciting match, uh, exciting bout. Uh, Sleigh Bells kind of took control in about the about halfway through the first period and really never relinquished it. Uh, Reindeers got close there towards the end, but uh, I'd have to say Peach Clobber kind of closed the door on him there with that I, last jam. They, they may have closed the door on Peach, but Verta Breaker was one more jam. That's all it would have taken. That's all you, <laughs> you were pulling for Verta Breaker the whole way. It's just exciting to watch all these players, exciting to watch the fresh meat out there doing a great job, being really vital performers out there and being a, a big part of the scoring opportunities, big part of the blocking lines as well. Yep, they're real and they're athletic and it's awesome. Yeah, that was great. Well, Money Honey, another Money one's Money in the Money. books, another great bout in the books here for the Juno Roller Girls. Really glad to bring it to you here on 360 North and if you're watching online, 360north.org. Hope you're able to uh, get on and blog with uh, Heather back there in the uh, 360 North studios as well. So I'm in, in decline. And I'm Money Honey. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you at the next bout that's going to be in February.